All right, well, on today's edition of The Convergence, I have a local company based here in Scottsdale called Listen Up. I'm really intrigued by this technology. They're using a combination of blockchain, DAO, AI, and in the future, AR, to be able to provide you a private guided tour of really any location using your phone and the geo locators inside of it, GPS chips, they can play for you messages um, using uh, AI data as well as data captured from users in the real world about locations you're visiting. Being, I live here in Arizona, and there's so much tourism here. Areas like Sedona and Flagstaff, many times you've got to hire a guide if you truly want to understand you know, the nature of the geology and the people that come from that area and find all the cool locations that maybe only us locals know about. This tool allows you to bypass that. And using a free app, you can actually have a private guided tour from uh, an AI or from people that have visited there before you. There's so many applications for this technology, even as we talk about for recording family memories, for uh, recording former vacations, going back and revisiting places later and listen to uh, what you had to say about that place when you were there previously. So I'd love you to listen in on this episode. If you're not a subscriber, please do like and subscribe. If you're listening to this on our podcast channels, make sure you check out YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, head on over to Apple or Spotify and uh, sign up there as well so that you make sure you do not miss any editions of The Convergence. everybody, and welcome back to another edition of The Convergence. I'm your host, Derek Maines. Today, I'm going to talk to some local entrepreneurs here in Scottsdale uh, with a company called Listen Up. I have Irina and Igor here. Welcome. I, did I pronounce it right this time? You did. You did. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Well, I was excited because uh, we, we ran into each other at a couple different events over the course of a couple days. And uh, and, and we were chatting about AI and the trends with AI. And uh, I, I don't want to call you old, but but you're sort of the grandfathers here. You've been around for a year, which is a long time in the conversation. And, and I know I'm saying that, but I've had guests on that have been around this for 30 or 40 years. But from a business application in bringing AI to the masses, you're you're definitely more of an early adopter. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about Listen Up and where the concept came from to start. Of course. So Listen Up is the first audio platform that tells you about where you are, wherever you are. So we are able to detect exactly where you are and tell you interesting stories about that location, whether it's the building in front of you, the park on the corner, the statue you're standing in front of, the business in front of you. So you actually get to hear user contributed stories, but we also have AI generated stories as well. Interesting. So you're using GPS coordinates for, for that location? Is that is that the That's, location settings it, on the phone? Yeah. So outdoors, we do use GPS, obviously. Um, indoors, we'll use uh, beacons, so Bluetooth low energy beacons or some other technology like Wi-Fi. There's a the combination of different um, factors that we're incorporating in to make it useful. So from a uh, from a user's perspective, they're going into the app. And sort of like a virtual tour guide, you know, from what I've seen so far, you know, like a virtual tour guide, being able to use the application to find out about things that are inside their environment. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, ultimately, there are a lot of inputs that go into the system or your device as it may be now your phone. Um, and there's a lot of information that can be leveraged from that data. So that's ultimately what we're trying to do. The goal is really just press play, put that phone away, put your ear pods in and enjoy where you are. Really in a lot of senses, you're acting like a private tour guide. You guys have been around for a while. You, you've been using the technology of AI before the sort of chat G GPT revolution. And, and you couple both AI and user generated content. Is that, is that correct? Maybe you can tell me a little bit more about the background and history. Yeah, that's exactly right. So generally, this comes from uh, the need that we developed while we were traveling with our family. Um, we are a married couple. Uh, and so 
you know, essentially we realized that there were a lot of things that were out there on the internet, but they're not accessible to you when you're actually on location. So if you're walking through a town, the last thing you want to do is pull out your phone and look down. And uh, that's exactly what happened to me in Venice. So ultimately, uh, we decided there must be a way to pull this information together and put it into an app and, you know, use the technologies that are just simple and available like text transcription, uh, translation, text to speech, um, you know, all of these things that are just available in the cloud. And um, this was to some degree prior to uh, tools like ChatGPT being around. So Ultimately, when that did come around, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. I just said, wow, this is the technology that we can use to leverage all of these other technologies to make this something that's available for everyone in the world in any language. For that's free. Amazing. Yeah. For free. So that was the other thing I was going to ask you. I want to ask you about the business model because, but, but let's, let's talk a little bit more about the technology first. <clears throat> so from a use case perspective, let's say I'm going to Sedona, uh, I can pop my earbuds in and based upon the, the my geolocation, it will provide me information about the things that I'm finding and experiencing in my environment. Is that correct? Better yet, before you even get to Sedona, turn it on in Bluetooth in your car and have it talk to you while you're driving into Sedona through those turnabouts and understanding a little bit about where you're going, what you're gonna see, what's in front of you while you're driving. And then get out of your car, start walking down in Old Town or in Sedona. Yeah. And you'll get those stories in your ear as well. Then uptown. you can do uptown. That's it. Yeah, uptown, then you can right, do a yeah. hike, still have those in your ears as you're doing a hike, learning about where you're hiking. Hmm. And it can possibly give you time to do a meditation and it'll stop you and let you truly take a 10 minute break while it's in your ear and walk you through a meditation. So there's so many different possibilities that this app can do. But actually in Sedona, what I just described is something that we ended up creating for ourselves that anybody can use at the moment. Yeah. Um, well, as an avid hiker and backpacker, I got to say that it's a great idea because I end up on all trails all the time. I end up reading reviews. I look at other people's pictures. You know, I'm trying to figure out, okay, is this a good trail for dogs? I'm 20 years in Arizona in like a week. So now I'm a native, uh, you know, so I'm going to call myself an Arizona native now, uh, but being a native, uh, you know, I don't, I don't usually want to, you know, I don't want to go to devil's bridge, right? Because I don't want 600 people walking beside me on the trail. I want to go on the off, you know, off uh, trail kind of things. And that is more difficult to find information on number one, but also I want to know about the experiences of people that have have gone on that trail and what they've seen. So when you're talking about using AI, using geolocation, are you coupling the two together or are you, how does that work from connecting the dots? Because the AI, you know, open AI has information in it, but is that information geocoded or do you have to do the geocoding? Uh, so generally it's not geocoded and that's where our technology comes in and so that we generally try and you know, manipulate various different data sources and mesh them together into something that is useful. Um, it's not impossible for that data to be geocoded, but nobody spent the time doing that or nobody found value in doing that. Even if you go through Wikipedia, the majority of landmarks are poorly geocoded. There's, um, you know, they, they don't outline the space that they that it occupies. Uh, it may give you one single point in space, but guess what? Uh, the Great Wall of China, that's not going to uh, exist on a single point in, in geospace and latitude longitude. So ultimately, we had to come up with a lot of our own technology in terms of algorithms to determine geography, to determine, um, you know, what the the geographic makeup is. So the outline of places um, but, you know, it's doable. It's it's available somewhere. It's a matter of mashing up a lot of this uh, data from different sources. But ultimately, we can we can put it all together into the Listen Up platform. I love that. And I love that, you know, I love thinking about where the future of this goes to as a former AR VR exec back in 2015. 
you could just see where it's going, right? The fact that yeah, you can, you know, the spatial, once you've got that spatial recognition piece, which will come relatively soon, I think, uh, you know, you can have this appear right in your environment, uh, which is, which would be pretty cool, right? Yeah, I, I think the days, you know, people, people look at this and they say, oh, this will always be with us. This will, this probably yeah. has another five years lifespan, but very, very soon things are going to be done, uh, you know, via glasses, via contacts. Uh, I've, if you haven't seen Magic Leap, anybody who's watching this, some of the technology the companies like Magic Leap have to, to actually project holographic images into your, onto your retina, you know, it's coming and it's coming relatively soon. And you can see the evolution of where this technology goes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, for people like you, it, it's quite logical and it makes sense. For people who are not uh, adept at this technology, it's just kind of like they're, they're, they think you're crazy. But you're absolutely right. I mean, we're giving it three to five years. Um, we know that Apple's coming out with the device in just two or three months here that's going to mix VR and AR. Uh, and ultimately, the reality is that these devices for a period of time will not be useful outdoors, meaning you're not right. going to leave the house when you're wearing them. Yeah, uh, sure. But when they do, then there's going to be interactive content, but content will only exist in some places, yes. uh, meaning that you know, walking through your neighborhood, there might not be a ton of activity, let's say, in terms of the VR or AR realm. Uh, but there's a story everywhere. And so the audio is the layer that we're looking to cover the entire earth with so that when you do have the opportunity to see augmented reality in real space outdoors, you'll already have the stories built in. And we want to be the platform not just for audio AR, but also for visual AR once that technology and once the devices reach the point where uh, they're useful and, and they're pervasive, but that's going to take some time. Yeah, it always does. And I think, I think even back when I was involved in VR in 2015, everybody thought, oh, this was like the new thing. Uh, and, and then Meta is now pretty much shut their doors. You know, it's like you, it, it, it takes time for these types of technologies to be adopted. Um, and, and on top of that, I think the utility with something like VR is really tricky because I have to be in a stationary position AR, on the other hand, is is essentially implanting this. I shouldn't yeah. say you implant it in your brain just yet, but you implant it in a in a wearable device that will allow you to interact with your environment. So I see the real value in that. Um, yeah, I mean the way I frame it is, and you know this this may be slightly veering down a tangent here, but the way I view it is that humans take some time to adopt technology, and they don't necessarily know the curves of um, how technology progresses. Like the internet was invented in you know, the 70s. We didn't actually make good use of it until the 90s. Yeah. Um, but I look at the virtual reality as kind of the internet in the 90s in that um, we're just getting to a point in VR where we've pretty much figured out most of how the technology works, but we haven't um, exactly found all of the best use cases for it. But AR is kind of, we're not even in, it's kind of like blockchain, right? right? In early 2000, we didn't even understand this technology. We didn't quite um, imagine how we would use it and we were just getting into it. So I'm kind of feeling like VR is reaching the end of its um, evolutionary sort of, you know, use case, whereas yeah. AR is just, we haven't even <clears throat> started. I, I totally agree with you. And just to give you a, a little premise for anybody that's watching that doesn't know, but in I was a COO of a company called Timefire VR back in uh, the teens of uh, the 2000 and teens. Or, yeah, I guess, yeah, that, that's right. 2000 and teens. That sounds weird. But like 2014, 2015, and we launched the first metaverse. And it was a 40 mile by 40 mile square universe that you could go and interact with the environment and socialize and create your own apartment and do all these great things. But very quickly, we realized that the, the owners of headsets at the time, uh, the first week, they loved it. And everybody went into the environment and thought it was really cool. 
And then at the end of the first week, you could see the trend where all of the all of Reddit was like, why can't I kill people? Why can't I steal their things? Right. And it's like when you bring the Call of Duty player into into <laughs> this fun, fancy free environment of painting and, and exploration, at some point they're like, how do I steal other people's stuff and kill them and take it? And and that was really the end of that technology. And I I, I laugh and I've said in a couple other podcasts, Zuckerberg, if you're listening told you so. Like we figured this thing out seven years ago, the human beings weren't going to really like that experience, but the AR experience is very different. And I think well, that's- yeah, because it, it could, it could really just um, play so nicely with the world that we already live in. Uh, yes. A lot of people talk about the metaverse and, you know, obviously Meta, the company was very invested in this, but um you know, some of us actually like the real world. Some yeah. of us actually want to experience life. We want to go on walks. We want to go on bike rides. We want to interact with this, you know, beautiful environment that Mother Nature's given us. So I'm not necessarily sure that we all want to live in some virtual world. And, um, you know, ultimately for our real world to become more useful, more interactive. If you want to get people off of the couch, you have to make outside more interesting. Hmm. And that's the mission that we've got gotten ourselves on basically is to make the outside more interesting. I think that if anybody remembers the Pokemon Go, uh, you know, when, when that thing came, I remember I was in Dallas at like, we're leaving a bar at like one o'clock in the morning. And there had to be 500 people in the park <laughs> playing Pokemon Go. And, and it really did go to show that this generation, uh, you know, they're, they're happy to go out in the environment as long as there's something that's relatively interactive in the way that they interact with each other. And many yeah, of their friendships. As, yeah. as long as there are some rails to keep them getting hit from by cars or, you know, right. walking around, I mean, chasing something. This is why the phone is such a, you know, terrible um, device is that yeah. when, when you walk around with this thing, I mean, you're, you can't look at anything else. Yeah. So ultimately, yeah, when this is built into a headset that interacts with the real world and you're actually um, mm. engaged in, in the real world, you're not going to get hit by a car. Um, but you very well can if you're looking down at a phone. I mean, it, it happens way too often. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, yeah. it's it's an obstructive technology. Uh, please, yeah. Irina. Go, yeah, I mean, it, it is. It's an obstructive. Te- it obstructs your world. It, it doesn't. And there's an enhancement aspect to it, but enhancing, you know, by, by being able to visualize things in the environment is way more important. Um, l- let's talk for a bit about the content on the application and where it comes from, because we have talked a little bit about using you know, technology like ChatGPT using geolocation. How about the user-generated aspect of this? How important is that in order to create sort of a mesh that covers everything? People's stories are things that artificial intelligence, Wikipedia, Wikipedia and Google can't really give us. Um, Truly getting these generational stories from people, you know, for example, for Arizona, fifth generation Arizonians that can truly tell us what, life was like here while we're standing in the middle of Old Town Scottsdale and we hear about what things were like years and years ago, it truly gives you a different perspective of where you are. So those stories and the community that we're building truly makes um, something that just scraping the internet can't do. Yeah, I mean, most of these stories aren't even recorded. If you think about, you know, the way we look at things on the internet is in terms of value. How much value are you creating with your writing? So how many eyeballs are you going to get? How many people are going to (coughs) review on Yelp? But how many people care about your grandfather's story? Maybe not that many, maybe five, maybe 10, maybe it's just the next couple of generations, you know, but ultimately the cost to record those and to to memorialize those has come down significantly. Mm. So number one, there's no reason why we wouldn't want to capture them if we could. And number two, those stories can be made significantly broader, significantly more interesting, or significantly wider reach with artificial intelligence. Mm. So this is where GPT comes in and AI comes in and making our jobs as humans, as lazy humans in many cases, just easier. Man, I don't want to record this story. I mean, I'll I'll have to then do the post-production and then well, guess what? With Listen Up, you don't have to. We have an app called Tor Record. It's on both Apple 
and uh, Android, Android yeah, that's good. Um, app stores. And you go in, you just hit the record button. You you tell your story. You can be walking around a neighborhood. It'll record the location. You can add photos. You upload it to our cloud, and GPT and our AI does the rest. Doesn't that's need amazing. to use your voice. Doesn't need to. You don't have to. Do oh, it doesn't anything. even need to use your own voice. That's interesting. Uh-huh. Synthesize cool. voices plus in 25 languages. So that story on the corner yeah. can, can be, yeah, yeah anybody. To can... everybody. And I think that's so important. You know, it's funny. I mentioned this in a, and I typed into the other browser. Uh, you know, one of the things that, that is really interesting for me is that I, uh, our home here in Tempe, where we live now, we've radically remodeled it, changed the entire floor plan, did a bunch of things. But it is memorialized in virtual reality on uh, YouTube. And uh, I just pulled it up. It has 48,000 views uh, back seven years ago when we made this wow. virtual tour. And it's really interesting to hear my narrative of walking through the house and all of the things that we had did and looking over on the couch and seeing our dogs that passed away five years ago wow. and, and sort of memorializing all of these things. Um, and, and I believe, I, I've said this, I, I've I, I, you know, I have some groups that that we do philosophy type work and deep thinking. And one of the things that I've 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 been a really proponent of is saying that we are really the first generation in history that actually could live forever. Um, our physical beings might not live forever, but our voice, our memories, our knowledge, our wisdom has the potential of living forever. If we if we think back three thousand years ago, you know, we we can with we we can call on. A dozen or less people that we knew that lived at that time. Well, today the record is much, much broader. And I think it's really important to see that, particularly if if you're getting older and maybe you want to document places on the farm or stories for your children and your grandchildren. I think that's a really important aspect uh, of our lives that is, I don't think we've yet considered, but I think it's a trend that's coming where you're going to start to see in four or five years people doing much more deep recording of their lives and their experiences t- so that they can live on, uh, you know, in a resurrected form uh, virtually uh, it, decades to come. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially on the, and this is something that I geek out on all the time, but especially in the future as as we're progressing through this, you know, age of AI, yeah. um, technology is getting better and better, right? So there's tech now that can take like 30 seconds of audio uh, yeah. And basically, you know, create a deep fake of your voice. Maybe your old photos are going to come back to life, or maybe they'll come back to life in Listen Up in the virtual space mm. wherever they were taken. Mm. Right? These are all things that AI can do. But it's it's an exciting time. Yeah, I, yeah, I would see that too. You know, going on a family vacation someplace as a child, and then coming back twenty years from then after your parents are deceased or whatever that might be, and and you know, ex- re-experiencing that narrative. That's a pretty powerful thing. I think it's a very emotional, connective thing. I, I have uh, I, I, my family. Very fortunately, one of my grandparents was born in Scotland, and the uh, the home that he was born in became a national monument after they moved out. Uh, so literally, it is encapsulated there in Scotland, and everybody from my family is gone and stood in that room, laid on the bed that my grandfather was born on, touched the high chair and the things that my great grandparents, you know, had in their home, and that that's a real. Uh, even for somebody like me who's not very, I'm not an empath, that's a really incredibly deep experience to be able to connect with other people that existed in a in that same space that have some relation to you. And I love to see what you're doing with your technology because I, 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 you know, as being a futurist, I'm seeing how that goes down the line, not just what you're doing today, but how that can become a, a really incredible way for people to tell the stories of their past. Stories of the past as well as the present. Um, right now, and for selfish reasons, we've got a kid going to college soon, and we're doing college tours and university tours, walking around after hours without a tour guide or an ambassador from that university, being able to hear the stories of students actually telling us about, oh, that's the you know that's where the cafeteria is, or the mac yeah. and cheese is the best cafe, you know the best food ever. Things like that where it's current and relevant at the moment now is really important too. So there's so many use cases for this app. I'm stunned that you said that because one of the things that Time Fire did in its first year of existence, the VR company, is we did VR college tours and did the exact same thing. I think some of the funniest stories from that were 
when we had the virtual reality camera on campus and a, and a very nice looking young lady or young man would walk by and someone would be in the VR headset and their head would turn and you're yeah. going, Oh, is that the redhead? And they're like, oh, wait, what do you mean? You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. the, the human reaction. Is that the guy without the shirt? And the women are like, oh, no, what are you talking about? It's like, well, no, he's right over in that space. I know, I know your geo position here. But that's a really good point. I think, um, you know, taking these technologies, especially the repetitiveness. And my wife and I, we travel and we, we love tour guides because a tour guide can give you an experience that nobody else can. And that private tour, and not everybody can afford that. Right. I mean, if you're, if you're right. traveling, you can't uh, afford yeah. it. Our research shows that one out of every 1,000 people take a tour guide. So mm. for all those people that um, haven't taken tours, maybe it's because they can't afford it. Maybe it's because they just prefer to explore on their own. Yeah. Um, maybe it's because they don't speak the language. These are yeah. all things that we oh, want to try and... Um, or similar to us, we ended up missing a bunch of tours because of teenagers that would oversleep our prepaid tours in Italy. So that's yeah. what this came about. I mean, <laughs> you, you, th this is, you, you're resolving we, your own pain points. <laughs> that's exactly, we were, this wasn't planning to, we weren't planning to give this yeah. to the world. It was right. one of those things where we started traveling and there was one trip where we didn't have content in that area. And I said, that's it. I'm suckered in. I'm addicted to this app. I need to know what that building is right there on the corner, that old, old building. And that's why I'm like, I think the world needs this. It's not I, just us because yeah. we took it for ourselves in the beginning. Yeah, that's great. Irina, yeah. tell, tell us a little bit about, you mentioned that it's totally free. Um, what, what is the business model that comes into play here when it comes to Listen Up? We are really um, focused on small businesses and being able to give hyper local stories of these small businesses and giving a platform for local businesses within every community to truly give their story and be able to pay for who's actually walking in their door. Because right now mm. they're doing the spray and pray approach through influencers that are not necessarily right there or people are, you know, scrolling on the couch. Oh, maybe I'll go in and get, you know, a piece of pizza at this small mom and pop shop. You don't know. But when they're literally within a block or two away, these businesses are able to easily go on our platform, literally push a button, give us their real story. What do they do for the community? What inspired them? Why are they here in this area? You know, they're telling us their sauce recipe from their great, great grandmother for that pizza place you know what, I might want to walk in if I'm literally a block away walking around that area or driving around. I'm like, that sounds really good. So that is part of the monetization. There are a variety of ways that we are doing that. That's one of the things that we truly thought we can make a difference for the local communities and local businesses throughout the world. Wow. I love that. I could certainly see as someone who uh, for many years was a really avid hiker you know, I, I talked about this idea years ago, taking a VR camera with me and just narrating the hike, you know, and letting people play it at their own speed because there's people that hike faster than me, people that hike slower, you know, and, and sort of doing that and sort of subscribing to a narration. I, I, I uh, there was an app out years ago, I think it was called Zombie Run, um, where you, uh, it, it was GPS and it was to train you to do a 5K. But the whole thing was a story and narrative in your ear about these zombies. And then all of a sudden it's like, don't look now. There's one behind you. You better pick up the pace. Like they're, they're encroaching on you're like, oh my God, right? So so you got a little motivated to run. I mean, my running style was more like flailing my arms and you know, trying to get away from the zombies at that point. But uh, I can certainly see how using this technology really is applicable. Um, for people that want to find out more about and you and you're are you in beta? Are you in the market completely now? Where are you at in your stage, number one? And then how do people find out more about what you all do at Listen Up and how do they get the app? Yeah. So um, in terms of stage, we are at what we what many people might consider an MVP. Okay. Um, we put out version 1.0 of Listen Up. It's a, the app that tells you about where you are, wherever you are, but it is only focused on the Phoenix and Scottsdale and Flagstaff yes. and Sedona area. So it's kind of very hyper local um, for now. For now. Yeah. Um, you know the technology that we we use obviously can scale globally, but that's a that's a a big cost to take on, and sure. we haven't taken any funding yet. So nice. okay. um, up until this point, we're completely bootstrapped, 
And um, we intend to take some soon. We can talk about that in a bit. But ultimately, we are really focused on um, providing equity for the folks who are contributing to our platform. So the goal is, um, you know, there's this huge wave of AI coming. A lot of people are very concerned that they're going to lose their jobs or that AI is going to, you know, revolutionize things and create more of a wealth gap between the haves and have nots. And, mm -hmm. and we're going to do our part to try and, um, you know, adjust that balance. So people who contribute to our platform uh, continue to earn. Currently, they earn cryptocurrency um, in order to basically uh, give them the benefit of equity in our platform. So that's a really important piece to us. And ultimately, over time, we hope to show the world that there are more equitable ways to build a company than some of the ones that have been used up until this point. Hmm. So you're using a you're using a token. You've got some tokenization, I guess, in your platform. So are are you operating that as a DAO, or how does that work? As far as people on this show will be familiar because we talk about DAOs pretty frequently. Yeah, I mean, yeah. most DAOs, um, most DAOs are, you know, focused on um, either DeFi, so you know, some sort of financial mechanism. So what I might consider mutual investing. Um, others are focused on gamification or or elements of um, pay to play. We're really focused on uh, content and information, and we're really focused on on basically building out the ecosystem where there's uh, a clear value that's being created. Especially if you're in a location and you don't know anything about that location, somebody else's knowledge may actually provide value to you and you can provide value back by patronizing the businesses and those people can earn uh, based on that that model. Um, so yes, we are structured as a DAO. Um, obviously in the United States that uh, any kind of cryptocurrency correlation has its um, caveats and, and we need to be careful about how we incorporate that, especially into our fundraising structure. Um, but it's part of our ecosystem. It, we're, we're web three native and, um, we intend to show the world that, you know, equitable companies can also come out of the web three space, not just, you know, <laughs> Yeah. DJ. Fortunately, we have been lucky on this show that we focused a lot on Web3 in the first year, but we made it a rule that there had to be utility. So if you wanted to be a guest on this show, you had to show the utility, which means that I think every Web3 company we have featured on this show is thriving, right? They're still, they're still alive and because there was a utility to what they were doing. It wasn't just a, oh, we're just throwing NFTs out there for NFTs. Even, even early episodes where we were talking to artists that were doing NFTs, we only talked to artists that did NFTs if they did real art in the real world. And NFT was just more of a membership pass of your ownership level. Uh, you know, so, so I'm glad to hear that you've built that in as utility. Um, and, and, and it sounds like that once, you, once you've, you know, you've, you've built the MVP, you're getting it tested in the marketplace, you will go into doing some fundraising. And at that point, then you can start to scale out um, globally, which is exciting. Yeah, very exciting. Very exciting, yeah. and and the scale out is you know not just from the perspective of uh, information about where you are, wherever you are. It's really any uh, use case for geospatial audio or audio in general. I mean, we're we're hoping to drive forward the audio rev revolution in computing um, because you know we've pretty as we've pretty much established in this podcast alone. Uh, the the device, the phone with the screen is a hindrance in uh, a lot of our yeah. daily lives. Tell the folks a little bit about how to get a hold of you and how to find out more about Listen Up. Our website's joinlistenup.com, but you can always go to hashtag join Listen Up on any of the social media platforms and you will find us. So just hashtag join Listen Up and you'll find us. Is the app exclusively on Apple right now or, or it, Apple and Android? How does it work? Yeah, so currently the the user uh, app, so not the contributor app, which is uh, Tor Record, okay. but the the tools for actually experiencing uh, Listen Up in the real world are on 
Apple, Apple. alone. Okay. Uh, we would love to build out the Android platform as well. Uh, we will need funding to do that. So yep. it's and it's next on our road. Start someplace, right? I mean, Apple, Apple is the more dominant platform, so it makes sense to do that. Uh, well, thank you both so much for being here. It was excellent to learn more about what you're doing. It's got me got my brain thinking too, just from all the things that I've been involved with over the years and how there's so many different applications to what you're doing. So thank you. On your you both next for bike. Me. Yes. I'm gonna do to record. I'm Download doing it. Record on your next hike. Press gr the gr button to just yeah. press record. Walk through your hike. Talk about it. It can yeah. be lagged. You can do whatever. And then just send it to us. And let's see okay. what you can do with right, that. Cool. I, I'm, I'm excited. I, I actually have an, a whole idea that came out of this because I do so many podcasts and thinking Perfect. about doing location-based you know, walk through podcast type I items. I think there's some yeah. stuff there we should chat about offline because I think we yeah. got some good yeah, ideas. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you both for being here. And thank you all for joining us on another edition of The Convergence. Make sure you like and subscribe and uh, keep sharing the show. We the, the user base is growing and the community is growing and we're excited to have you along with us. Thanks for being here. All right, that was really fascinating. I was so interested in the things that they're doing and so many different applications. We actually continued talking afterwards about some business ideas I had, and I'm going to use the Listen Up app to do some live podcast recordings uh, in, in, in locations. And I'm excited about trying this technology out, and I'll keep you posted on that. All right, well, then, until next time. Thanks for listening to The Convergence. If you want more information about the topics you've heard here today, reach out to us at theconvergencepodcast.com.